tell them you need to start watching it, man. We watch it every night before we go to bed. Thank you for being my friend. And this Sunday, this Mother's Day, is a little different than ever. And, and, and Pastor Randy does like to switch things up and change things up. Historically in our church, every Mother's Day and Father's Day, we have given gifts to mothers and fathers. And there's usually three categories. The category is the one with the youngest baby in service. The one with the mother children in service. And one happens to be the oldest mother in service. And that doesn't sound right when you say it slowly. The oldest mom in service right there. But because of what God placed on my heart in the walk-up video, the sermon this week is Golden Girls, Proverbs 31. Most of you have heard of a Proverbs 31 woman. This is going to be called the Golden Girls. And before we proceed into the sermon, we are going to recognize three Golden Girls this Sunday. The three oldest moms in service that have children. Now let me tell you, Pastor Randy has to break that little chain and jump out of his comfort zone and ask people, how old's your mom? <laughs> so I know who the winners are. When we first started the church, it was always mom. And then all of a sudden, for a couple of years, she was running strong. She'd win. I'm the old. And then somebody came in. And then when Beachy came in, there was no way we're ever going to get in there about it. But this year, we're going to recognize and celebrate and give gifts, which are just awesome. I had a great time at Dollar Tree yesterday. <laughs> awesome gifts to our three oldest moms. So I know I have one that's 85. Look at that. Come on, come on. It's a good thing. Come on up. Come on up. Yes, you get to come. You got to come up here. I know. I don't mean to embarrass you. It's not. You're going to love these gifts, girl. You get good gifts on Mother's Day. I'm telling you. I'm just a visitor. You're not a visitor. You're a, you come in here, lady. You are family. You're part of God's family. Grab a seat. I know you're there. The other one is feisty and spicy. Feisty. <laughs> And look at that look on her face. Miss Edith, you can all out there. It will not, it'll be, I don't even know how old Miss Edith is. 84. 84. Look at that. I did this in order, I think. 85, 84. Listen, if I miss somebody, I did not. I know I did not. And last but absolutely not least would be mom. Mom looking so beautiful over there. Just come on up there. How old are you, mom? Look at that, 85, 84, 82. I'm pretty good at that, right? If anybody feels slighted, oh well. Here's where they're getting. All three of you are getting this wonderful bag of gifts. And what the best part is I get to explain each one to you. So here we go. First and foremost, we know that you being the oldest moms in the building, well, there's some things we got to take care of. And one is going to be your pills each week. So we need to make sure you have your pills organized. So everybody got a pill organizer. And just in case you mess it up, I got you a little memo pad so you can write down things. But look, it, it, it says don't quit. One thing you have to know, being our classics, don't quit. We still love you. We still need you. And then they would come walking in. The other thing is, and I don't know about every one of you moms up there, but I kind of know my mom really well. And um, she has a lot of stuff in her house. <laughs> like, lots of stuff. Moms just seem to have stuff. And so for each of you, if you would do us all a favor as your family and start pricing them now. <laughs> if, if, if you could just start pricing this so we don't feel bad later on, if you could do that. I, I got those for you. Um, I know that would get kind of boring sometimes. So I did get you this as well. If y'all want to start playing some bingo, got your bingo markers. There's no time to waste as you increase the inheritance by winning some more money. There you go, right there. This one was my favorite gift, and, and I, I gotta explain it to you a little bit. I got you all smart watch bands and bracelets. None of them probably know how to use a smart watch, but at least they can wear the bracelet and look like they know how to use a smart watch. So y'all don't have to have smart watches, just wear it, and people say, What is that? They'll look at you and they'll say, Oh, that's so sweet, honey. You, there's no watch in there, but you can wear that. So that's too bad. And last but certainly not least, because um, I believe this is where moms have always touched my heart, love makes a house into a home. 
And so we love you all as moms, and we thank you for loving us back, and thank you all moms for the love that you give us moms. Give them all a round of applause there. Thank you for that embarrassing moment. I know it's like you know, there you go. One more time, one more round of applause for our beautiful, beautiful moms this morning. Go well, have a seat for the whole service. You can go. Okay. That'd be kind of weird me preaching that to like right here. I love shopping the Dollar Tree. Dollar twenty-five. Sorry, dollar twenty-five. One and a quarter tree. What's that? I know. I'm going to need a nap after this service. <laughs> are, we, are we back there? Did you get all that on? So, embarrassed even on Facebook. Um, Golden Girls. Not because of their age. That's not why the Lord gave me this sermon. But Golden Girls in their love, their commitment. And I say this, and Ms. Melanie, thank you for sharing it earlier. Not all of us have our moms here today. Not, and I'm going to talk about that again in just a little bit. Not all of us have the same relationship with our moms. And I understand that. I understand that in a perfect world, it doesn't always turn out perfectly in our worlds. But I want you to know what God says about moms. And if you're a mom, if you understand this, I hope this is an encouragement, a blessing to you, because it's the word of God, and it blesses me when I get to share it. Some attributes or characteristics of a mom. And Proverbs 31 is we're going to hover there the whole sermon today. The first one that stands out is in 31 verse 10 as it comes up. And it says this. A wife of noble character who can find she is worth far more than rubies. Her worth. Beautiful and creative inside and out. Her worth. The world bases worth on how much you make. How successful we're. How did you move up the chain. That's not the way God sees worth. He looks at people in their inside and in their heart and how they live it out and how they take care of other people. A wife of noble character who can find, but she is worth far more than rubies. It's kind of interesting that that scripture was placed on my heart this week because as I was talking with Pastor Kimberly this week, she had asked me for something, a ruby. And I called Elmer immediately and we're working on the ruby deal. But rubies are really expensive, I just want you all to know. So if pastor goes and gets another job, is to get a ruby for my wife, who is worth more than the ruby I can put on her finger. Their moms are worth more than the gifts that we can give them on Mother's Day. It is always kind of interesting that we highlight one day out of the year for fathers and for mothers, but we're supposed to love them constantly. We're supposed to um, lift them up in prayer and, and respect because they are far worth far more than rubies and they're worth I can't tell you and I can only speak from from my personal life and I've always had a mom in my life my mom has been there I can remember as a child at Dover Elementary School we lived just down the road on Downing Street and we would walk hand in hand to school every morning now for some guy that's in here, oh, you one of them boys that held your mama's hand, that's right, and I will hold her hand today because I'm a mama's boy. I can tell you, my mom walked me to school. My mom taught at my school. My mom would stand there and tell other teachers, don't come whining to me. You take care of my son. I'll take care of him because I'm his mother, and when he gets home, he'll know he's been taken care of. I didn't need them to go trump other teachers by calling on my mom. I had a relationship with my mom, and I still do this day. For a long time, I called my dad every day and tried to make sure I contacted him. And he's no longer with us, so it's mom. And mom's there, and mom has been a rock for this family. Moms hold things together. A lot of times if you think they've got things and they're not doing this, or their house doesn't look like this. Listen, they hold so much together, it's unfathomable. Guys, we are so blessed that we're not moms. They do something amazing. And we need to recognize and, and if you don't see their worth, remember how much he sees their worth. For a moment in your life, no matter how bad it may have been or the situation wasn't the way you hoped it would be, look through the eyes of the Lord God himself who looks at them as precious and precious as they can be. As Jesus Christ, the Son of God, came from the virgin womb of Mary, he loved his mom. 
He didn't disrespect her when she knocked at the door and there was no room. He was trying to tell her that she's part of a bigger family and she's got greater responsibilities. And she brought to life. She committed to what the angel said. She took on the responsibility of bringing Jesus into the world so that he could die. We like to pull that out. We like to get all excited and warm and fuzzy on this side about, oh, yes, she, she was there and she gave birth to Jesus Christ. And we see the manger scene. He came to that manger just so he could go to that cross. And those red letters would be written for each and every one of us. That's how precious Mary is and that's how precious your moms are. Proverbs 31 and 15 says, she gets up while it is still dark. I live this one out constantly. My wife gets up while it is still dark. She is, there's some things that are different. What is that? Women are from Venus, men are from Mars, whatever it used to be in the book. I can tell you, when it comes to sleep, Kimberly and I are complete opposites. Once the mask goes on, the CPAP is blowing, I'm out, and I'm out until that thing starts sounding like a tornado. That means get up, get up, get up. She will get up every three hours. I look out and see what time it is. Um, I'm like, she's up. Does that mean it's time for me to get up? And I look at my watch. It's 2.30. No, I'm not getting up. It's 4.30. I'm not getting up. She gets up while it's still dark. She provides food for her family and portion for her servant girls. They have servant hearts. My mom has a servant heart. As the matriarch of this church, she has a servant heart. I can tell you, and it was always my responsibility, and unfortunately it was my fault, Byron, I apologize to you for having to eat healthy all those days in Little League football. The broiled hamburgers and the carrots were horrible. I know it was not the way we hoped, but I was fat and I had to lose weight, and therefore <laughs> mom would make sure to make weight at Dover Cowboys that she would make me broiled hamburgers and carrots. You know how excited we were to come to dinner? Oh, Lord, not another fat rainy meal. I'm so thankful that she did that. To this day, I am 54 years old. I'll be 55 in October. I can tell you the truth. And I can tell you, my wife standing right there will own this up as well. If I throw up and I'm sick and throw up as part of the sickness, the person to call is not Kimberly. I call mom. Yep. She will tell me, are you about to get sick? Yeah, you better call your mom because I'm out of here. <laughs> The servant heart was placed in the understanding of who Mary would be to Jesus. Jesus came to show us what ultimate service looked like, but his mom served up her son for all of us. That's the servant heart that we read about in Proverbs 31. The sacrifice, mom sacrificed for all of us. Mom drove us places. Mom was at scouts. Mom was there running the concession stand. Mom was all those things. Kimberly runs around, let me tell you, and I know he always, doesn't always recognize it, but George Kirkland Humphrey would not be George Kirkland Humphrey back there leading children if it wasn't for that lady right there. I can tell you that. Loved him through saving his life. Going down on her knees at a small church because her child was supposed to die before he was five. And the only thing she could do was turn to God and serve him and ask, will you save my son? And he did. 24 years ago. Good lordy. Servant hearts. I can tell you a strange statistic, and we, we baffle about it all the time, but if you go to any church service this Sunday, any Mother's Day, anywhere, I can tell you that the women are going to outnumber the men every single time. That has not changed. We grew up in a culture where men came in and they had leadership and they were, they, they were heads of their homes and all this. Listen, women held all that together. I am thankful for my mom. I've seen examples of great moms all around me with Diane, with, uh, with Grant. Everybody around me, I've seen great moms. I shared a funeral yesterday. I shared at a funeral yesterday. Mrs. Flowers, Mama Jean. When we grew up, we grew up in the time where everybody's house was open to you. On the neighborhood, you just ran in somebody's house and that's where you played. But we also grew up with the understanding is if we were in their house, they were the parents. If I was at the Flowers house, Miss Flowers would feed me if I needed to, give me something to drink if I was thirsty, and get on to me if I needed to be getting on to. And you think about how she led her life. We had moms everywhere. And we loved them for it. 
The next one in verse 28. Her children arise and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. Blessing to those around her. As much as this scripture says to pour out your blessing, they will arise and call her blessed. Listen, the reason why you call her blessed is because you're blessed to have her. The reason why we get to turn that around and say, my blessing of my life, I can tell you the reason why I stand before you and I'm comfortable to speak is because that's what my mama taught me. Y'all didn't have the opportunity to meet my dad. No one in this room or very few people in this room got to meet my dad. We talked about him the other night. He's a hoot. If you want to know where craziness is, I used to think it was from dad until we found out all the things that were in her closet, mom's closet, Mike, you know what I'm saying? I think a lot of it did come from mom as well. But I can remember those days sitting there writing essays and writing poems and doing my English and my, my literature stuff, and that's mom. Dad was the numbers guy, but that's mom. I can realize that she taught for 22 years. The reason why I asked her to teach on Wednesday night, she's like, but Randy, I'm like, you taught for 22 years, and she didn't teach the, the best of the best. She didn't teach the STEM kids. She taught the worst of the worst at Tomlin. And then guess what? If you walked up to her and said you're teaching the worst of the worst, she said, no, I'm not. I'm teaching my children. Today we will go to places, a lot of people recognize me, Kimberly always says, everywhere I go. But it's amazing when somebody in their 30s will come up to us and they're working at some place and they'll go, are you? A lady ran back in last night. We had a funeral here some, last night as well. And one of the ladies ran back in and said, are you Miss Humphrey from Tomlin? She said, yes, I am. You taught my son. Listen, the blessings that we have, whether we always understand it or see it, God blessed us with moms. And my mom is an absolute blessing to me and to everyone that she meets. Last but certainly not least, the final 29 through 31. This is the one that I think is most important to each of you this day. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting. That's not just because of classics. It happens to all of us. But a woman who fears the Lord is what? To be praised. Can y'all say to be praised? To be praised. In our lives and understanding, if we want to know what it means to be praised, it's not by the great things you do or the deeds that you might tackle or the understanding that you may give. It's in the fact that you fear the Lord. How do we fear the Lord? We fear Him by receiving Him, believing Him, trusting Him, and obeying Him. We fear the Lord for He gave us eternal life. We fear the Lord for He gave us life in itself. Give her the reward she has earned. And let her works bring her praise at the city gate. I know without a doubt that God loves moms. I know that. And see what's going to turn that slide real quick. God loves moms. I know that the hardest funeral I'll ever do will be my mom's. But I'm also going to take great joy and peace and understanding of knowing I know exactly where she is. I know where she'll be at that moment. That moment that she's no longer with us, she's right with her Father in Heaven for all eternity. And I don't mean just her Father, the Creator of all things, but I mean her Father, B.B. Kim. For many of us that don't have our parents with us, it is hard to think. And it's struggle and it's a challenge. But I can tell you, if they fear the Lord and understand how much God loves them, cherishes them, and honors them, then they too will be with us for all eternity. That's the peace that surpasses all understanding. They may not be anywhere with us today, but they will be with us for all eternity. Let us pray over moms this morning. Dear Holy Father, thank you once again as your scripture lays it out clearly. Moms are extremely important, and you love them, and therefore we will love them. Thank you, Lord, that you provided a place. And I don't mean just a place. I mean a mansion. That by fearing the Lord, believing and receiving, our moms can have eternal life with you. And Lord God, for the ones that I said that didn't have the perfect relationship, Lord God, may they believe and trust you. May they have a relationship with you. Lord, we pray all of this and ask it all in Jesus' name. Everybody said, Amen. As Melanie said it earlier, this was the closing song yesterday at the funeral. And I, I've sang this before with you. Um, what do we do in the absence of our, our loved ones? 
is to trust in God. Because I can tell you, anyone that we've ever loved is always has been and completely healed if they've trusted in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Go ahead, Sam.